Everyone's good? Okay. Yep. So for um, everyone out there that's listening, um, we'll start with a round of introductions, first of all, to this panel discussion. So thank you for joining us now and in the future. Um, my name's Matt. I'm the Head of Research, Learning and Development at the International Federation of Esports Coaches. Um, we're putting on this panel discussion today to delve into the topic of parenting in esports and look at it from sort of an applied and academic perspective. So we're joined today by members of COPE, Shay and Chris, and Valeria from the German Sports University in Cologne. And I'll pass over to you guys to give us a brief um, introduction, who you are and your roles and maybe where, where you are in the world. Okay. Um, hello, I'll start. Um, my name is Shay. I'm one of the co-founder parents of COPE, Coalition of Parents in Esports. I'm located in Austin, Texas, and I ended up here because my kid's a gamer. Thanks for having us, Matt. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm a, also a co-founder, CEO of COPE. Um, I am based out of Florida, transplant from New York. Um, I'm also here because my son is a gamer as well. Okay, then I guess it's up to me. Um, my name is Valeria. I am a sports psychologist and PhD student at the German Sport University in Cologne. Well, currently I'm based in Utah. I'm doing a research stay at Utah State University. So I guess a US front here today. And my research focuses on parents in sport, especially in youth soccer and their stress and coping experiences. And um, that's my part of the panel today. Fantastic. Okay, so yeah, heavy, heavy North American uh, presence online today. I'm, I'm in Belgium, so representing from Europe, I suppose. Um, so to start with, uh, the, to the topic of the, the talk is parenting in esports. Um, Shay and Chris, perhaps you could sort of set the scene for us. What, what is the, uh, where's the need to talk about this? What's the, what's the importance of this? And if possible, what have been your experiences as parents of prominent esports players yourself? And maybe you know communications with other parents uh, in this in this scene. Set the scene for us. Okay, um, I'll I'll start with just the basic backstory of how we ended mm -hmm. up being the coalition of parents in esports. Um, you know, for me, you know, it just all started because I have a kid that was into gaming. Um, I was a little bit different, and I come from a technology background, so I did introduce gaming to my son at a very young age. But it was just always that, you know, that downtime for him. It was what he did when he came home from playing football or from some other sport. And I never really thought much about it. You know, it was just that fun family time. But he's the one that found competitive. He found competitive esports on his own and started doing it. And I thought, okay, that's great. You know, and he started connecting to other kids online. And at first I was a little bit concerned. I kept his gaming laptop, you know, on the dining room table so I could kind of observe who he was playing with. But as he got older, I let him, you know, move a bigger setup to, up to his room. And then I realized that it was really starting to dominate what he wanted to do. He couldn't wait to get home from football practice so he could get online with his friends. You know, he couldn't, he planned out time to practice. You know, he made sure that, you know, we were going to be home on the weekend so he could, you know, compete. And I still didn't realize how incredible it was until I realized that he was actually building somewhat of a business here. He was starting to stream on Twitch. You know, he was creating a community. He was branding himself. And I realized he was also forming really incredible friendships with people all over the world, which kind of blew me away. And on top of that, he was carving out the time to practice and actually get good at something that was incredibly hard. So I was kind of, you know, where at first I was a little bit unsure. I started to become impressed with what he was doing at the age of 14. Um, but, you know, he kept begging to be homeschooled. You know, he wanted to do this full time and I didn't really understand it. But I went with him to Fortnite World Cup, which was in New York. And that was a completely eye opening experience to me because I met all of these incredible people in the esports world. And I realized that, you know, my son had, you know, unknowingly found the next really cool boom in business and something that was really fun and something he enjoyed. And so when we came back, I decided, okay, I'm going to homeschool you. Let's jump all in. I have a marketing background. What do we need to do? And I realized there was nothing to really tell me what to do. 
there were no parent groups. The first thing I noticed, there was no, nothing online that told me, you know, how do I get my son on a team? What's a good team? What's a good contract? You know, what do they need to be practicing? There was just nothing to tell me that how to find a coach that, you know, I spent so much time online trying to find a coach, you know, that was easy when my son played soccer or when my daughter was in figure skating, I went to those locations and I found out, you know, how to get, connected to the coaching association, but that wasn't, it wasn't like that here. And so I found that I was asking other parents. I was either finding them on Twitter or I was finding them at LAN events. And Chris was one of those parents that I found at a LAN event. And his son was there to make an appearance and I started asking him a million questions. And, you know, fast forward six months and I was finding myself in the same position. Um, at the last big live event, which was DreamHack in Anaheim before COVID. So then during COVID, a lot of us parents started talking and realized that there was really nothing here to help parents. And there was nothing here to help kids talk to their parents about gaming and convince them that they needed to plan out their schedule, that they needed a coach, that they needed all these things. And so we you know, decided um, almost a year ago to band together um, we decided it was a nonprofit because we were really just here to help the community and change the view of gaming. And that's, that's how we got here. Fantastic. And um, actually, it, you mentioned when we first uh, spoke a while ago about, about Chris's involvement in this and how you were at a conference, I believe, and there was a queue of people lining up to talk to Chris. So there must have been someone important at the end of that line. And, and that's sort of how you guys... Uh, really like got to know each other or that was one of the first first encounters is that is that approaching true there chris yeah it is i, I wouldn't say <clears throat> somebody important at the end of the line but yeah <clears throat> that's how we met that's um that's how i met a lot of a lot of different parents when my when my son first kind of blew up um it, it was as close to an overnight blow up as possible um without it being an overnight blow up um so yeah, it kind of took me by surprise. I knew my son had a had a future in in this space here, but I didn't realize how quick it was going to take off. And um, when we started going to conferences, TwitchCon, um, all the different LAN events, meet and greets, <clears throat> he um, <clears throat> he would always line up and, and um, people would come up to him and meet him, ask for pictures, autographs. And as time went on, I, I started to realize parents were starting to line up to meet me as well, to pick my brain. You know, how, how did you get involved in the space? What is the space all about? Um, how do you manage his social life, his finances, his schooling, all this stuff that I didn't really have any resources to point them to other than my own experiences. Um, so as I started to meet more parents like Shay and some of the other pros of Fortnite World Cup, the pro parents, um, we all realized we had these similar experiences and we, we realized that we needed to make the resources more available, more accessible to new parents, new families coming into the scene to make their journey in esports a little bit easier to navigate. Okay, interesting. Um, when you both speak about sort of parents coming to you with lots of questions and uh, sort of clearly after some support, what <clears throat> did you get a sense for what their their perception of, of esports was? Was it critical or was it just uncertainty? Was there some judgment uh, there? What was that? What was that like? There yeah. was a lot of a lot of everything. Um, okay, a, a lot of misconceptions about what um, went on behind the scenes with esports. A lot of parents just thought it was kids sitting at their computers using it as an escape to just block out the outside world, not realizing that there was this whole world and this whole friend group. Their their kids were meeting friends from all over the world, and just creating this whole. Um, amazing social life and great little community for themselves. Similar Sorry. to yours, Jay? Was that your experience too? Yes. I mean, that's what I think most parents just don't understand it. Mm -hmm. And so they don't understand the technology behind it. And they're worried about who they're, you know, who they're playing with because it's not a friend group that they can drop them off for. And they also see it as their child's, you know, private time. So they tend not to get as involved because they see it as their space. And that's one of the things that we advocate for is get involved. You know, this is a play group just like any other that your kid is having. They're hanging out with their friends, even though they may live, you know, halfway across the country. You know, these, these relationships are just as valuable, important, and influential on your child as anyone they have in real life. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of it is just not understanding it. And then just that fear. 
that this is leading to a dead end path. I mean, the main thing is parents want the best for their kids and they don't, nobody's told them that this can actually lead to that. Instead, they've heard all of the fear mongering on, you know, news articles about where this can lead, you know, and it's treated, you know, like a vice or it's treated like an addiction mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be that way. It's usually not that way. And that's, that's really what we, you know, when we start telling them our version of what happened, it's usually just shock. They're like, wait a second, your kids figured out how to like learn stuff from this. The thing that I yell at my kid to get off, you know, quit playing. And I think it's just, it, it opens their eyes and it's fun to see their eyes open and realize that, okay, wait a second, maybe I need to learn more about this and maybe I need to pay attention. Yeah. Don't we all? Um, without meaning to, meaning to sort of fear monger any further, did you ever come across particularly negative experiences on the part of, of parents? Did they ever come to you with a, with a particularly yeah, suboptimal situation or was it generally um, their experience had been positive? They just, it was just an unfamiliar ground for them. Um, we all have had negative experiences. Um, but I think that's true for any activity that you're parenting in. I mean, my son played, you know, for, he played football and I can name all kinds of negative instances that happen there, you know, as you would with any sport. Mm -hmm. But I think that's just, you know, how you approach it and how you deal with it and in reaching out for help. Because, yes, there's definitely negative things that can happen here and you're going to have negative relationships. But again, that's about learning how to deal with life. I mean, there's toxicity here, you know, and that's something that we fight against every day, but there's ways to deal with that. And there's, you know, important lessons to be learned there about teaching your kids to deal with it. Yeah. And actually, Chris, if I remember rightly, your experience was, was fairly professional even. So you were, you, your son was, or there's a, there's a smile there that suggests I'm, I'm slightly wrong. No, 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 you're right. Um, my, my son, he was uh, signed at a very young age to a professional organization. He signed when he was 14 to Misfits Gaming. Um, they're based out of Miami and Berlin. Um, so he, he was very fortunate to get um, more of an inside look as to how um, esports organizations run and how the professional side of it works. Mm -hmm. um, so yet yeah, he has dealt with a lot of the toxicity and some of the negative stuff to it. But again, like Shay had mentioned, you get that anywhere. You get that any workplace, any sport, any level of sport. Um, <clears throat> but like like you said, I was very fortunate to have that professional environment and some professional um, people, employers that my son could lean on for help and guidance through all that. Great stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Didn't want to uh, highlight the negatives there, but um, just the perceptions of parents, I think, is is probably understandable like this is we're at a very early stage relatively speaking with with esports and there's a lot of uh, structures that are still emerging and professional practices that we are still developing but it's it's yeah great to hear that you guys banded together and it's been so successful i think we'll, we'll get into that uh, later down the line um let's bring in valeria here because um valeria your, your um academic background is around parenting in sports and just sort of a general question for you, like are some of the things that you hear in relation to esports, are they experiences that come up in traditional sports as well? Is there a lot of similarities there in the experiences of parents and maybe what they, they're, they're after in terms of support? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think I'm hearing similarities, but also differences uh, in there. So in general, maybe, of course, parents in traditional sports also make positive and negative experiences, definitely. And um, I think probably the most striking similarity is um, Chris used the word of a journey. So parents go through a journey and the kids go through a journey. And I really like that metaphor also for traditional sports, because I'm always saying that parents, when they first get introduced to sports, and even to like professional structures, maybe in an academy, are sometimes also on a journey, like a traveler in a foreign country. And at best, they have maybe a roadmap and a dictionary with them so that they can guide through and navigate. That's what Chris also said. And that's where um, outer parts, organization, coaches, experts come in and help educate parents to um, help them with their experiences and perceptions maybe. And I think um, that's a huge similarity maybe there. And then of course, 
parental roles. I mean, we heard Shay and Chris talk about the roles they take on for their uh, for their children. They um, go to the competitions, for example. They watch their child while um, he or she is competing. Of course, I'm guessing they they cheer. They have some emotional experiences, although they haven't talked about it yet. But I'm pretty sure about that. So um, this is very similar, of course, in traditional sports. But one key difference, I think, is. Although Shay said that she introduced her son to gaming, I think a lot of the times parents in traditional sports are the ones who actually give the first opportunity for kids to engage in sports. And sometimes the parents are active themselves in that type of sport. And I think that's a very big difference in esports because usually the kids are somehow finding their way into esports and then they might be signed already and it's not the parents who introduce them first. Interesting. Any idea what that might be? Uh, is this something where parents perhaps have a perception that they want their child to be engaged in sport, but less so competitive gaming? Is there something in that? Well, I'm guessing it might also be just a trend of, you know, changing changing trends in sport. I think I don't think we have a lot of parents currently in the generation of parents who are professional esport players or who have a history in esport so they might not be as likely to introduce their kids themselves where i'm guessing in 10 15 20 years there might be a changing landscape so um i think it's maybe just um well a change of time there also yeah the key point everything's going to change in, in 10 years i think we'll have role models in esports uh, in all professions so coaching profession too um, Valeria, in terms of sort of research, I guess I'm not I'm not particularly familiar with like the the sort of the key talking points in research in terms of parenting in in sport and esport for where it exists. What are what are like the 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 main talking points, the main topics of research when it comes to parenting in sport? Well, I think it's not surprising that you're not familiar with it because we're still a niche but we're getting there. Um, I think the key points in my opinion are um, the effects of parents in sports on their children, for example. So speaking in terms of a socialization, for example, into sport. What does it mean to win? What does it mean to lose, for example? Um, what is success for them? Um, introducing kids. Um, effects of parental behavior at the sideline, for example, in traditional sports um, and checking the outcomes, both positive and negative for their kids. I think those are um, big talking points, which initially got the research actually drafted because a lot of times parents are not perceived um, well in traditional sports. A lot of times they're being criticized, for example, for their behavior. And then recently we um, have seen a shift. So for example, about 10 years ago, there was actually a shift in research which made it more about the experiences of parents themselves. So what are parents perceiving in sports? What are they dealing with? So stressors, for example, emotional experiences, how are they coping with these stressors? That's also what my research is focusing on. And then more recently, it's about parent education. So how can we actually support and assist parents in navigating the youth sport journey? Fantastic. And your research, so you're, um, you're currently doing a PhD. Um, are you allowed to talk about what some of your sort of current projects involve? Quick promotion for you. Yes, of course. <laughs> I'm happy to share that. So um, I'm looking at stress experiences of parents in professional youth soccer in Germany in the academies. So um, in our first project, we were looking at what stressors parents experience while they are watching their child compete. And I'm thinking a lot of these might even be transferred into esports. I could see that definitely. And the future projects, which I'm working on also currently, is how do parents now actually cope with these stressors? And I'm especially interested in a dyadic perspective there. So as a couple, how does the couple of parents cope with the stressors? Because we know that most of the times parents actually attend the competitions of their child together. So um, it's more than one person that is involved there. And um, also I'm focusing on parent management. So how can you work on a good and professional and long-term parent management in an organization in order to alleviate parent stress experiences? Mm -hmm. Fascinating stuff. I saw some nods from Chris and Shay um, 
when you mentioned uh, stresses and, and intensity of emotion when watching uh, their children play, uh, Shay and Chris, what's the emotional experience uh, like when you're when you're watching your your child participate or perform? Um, absolutely unbelievable, just like any sport. <laughs> And, you know, and that's it, you know, it's, it's different because they're in their room, the door is shut and they're alone. So you can't be right there with them. You can't see them. Usually they're on a screen. And if you're at a live event, they're up on a huge stage a long ways away from you, you know, so you're separated from them, but you're feeling everything intensely. And, you know, so that that's a real challenge, you know, and wondering how they're doing in that moment, you know, as they're going through this and you're seeing And that's something that, you know, I think is surprising to a lot of parents when they first get into this because they don't realize how competitive, you know, this play can be and how intense the emotions can be. That was one part of it that I had to learn, you know, that just like, you know, since it's an inside sport, you think of it as something quiet, but it's not. It's just as feverish as something that happens on a football pitch. And so my son needed time to decompress after a really intense game. And it was one thing that I had to learn as a parent to not barge in and say, okay, it'll be all right, but to let him do his decompression time and then come out to me. And that was something I learned from another parent. (laughs) Chris, what's it like being at a LAN event with thousands, if not millions of people watching your Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, the the first big event my son was at was he he participated in was the Fortnite World Cup. And it didn't get any more stressful than that. Um, Arthur Ashe Stadium in Queens in front of 20,000 people broadcast over 2 million people uh, concurrently. It was, yeah, it it had me very tense, very stressed out. Um, And just knowing that he was on stage and I I wasn't anywhere near him to be able to see if he was okay or to talk him down. Not that he would want me around to help talk him down anyway, but like like Shay said, when they're going through that emotion, of whether it's winning or losing after an event, they want that time to decompress and cool down before they get get talked to about anything. Um, And that that just goes back to, um, you know, when when your kid is, excuse me, done competing, a lot of parents will, you know, if, if they hear a desk being punched or something gets thrown across the room, a parent's first reaction is to run in there and be like, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? No more games. Shut it off. You're done. You wouldn't do that on a soccer field. You wouldn't do that on a football field or in baseball. If your son gets frustrated and throws his bat down on the ground, <clears throat> they're frustrated. You want your kid to be frustrated. You want to show them appropriate ways to handle their frustration but you want them to be frustrated because it shows that they're passionate about it. It shows that they, they're really into what they're doing and they want to win, they want to succeed. So cutting that off is, is I think, um, it's not a good teaching tool. Uh, parents got to step in there and, and show them appropriate ways, let, let your kid cool down first and, and step in and show, show alternate ways to, to deal with that frustration. That's it, yeah, it's great to hear. Uh, before we continue that conversation and get onto the support work of COPE, I should ask, how do you celebrate as, a, as an esports parent? How do you celebrate with your child a big win or a, or a big moment? Is it, I, is it, it of course. <laughs> what, what was that? Sorry. On Twitter, of course. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. So it's not going for an ice cream. It's a, it's a tweet. Yeah, it's, it's that tweet. And I guess that's been one of the, you know, as we get into talking about COPE, that's one, been one of the fascinating things about forming this organization is, you know, we're there for all, you know, gamer parents, but it's been a great network of the pro parents, you know, to support each other because Mm -hmm. we also are watching, you know, their kids play. And we're also excited when their kid wins or we feel their pain when their kid doesn't. And it's been great to jump on Twitter and, you know, when one of the kids wins and all jump in there, you know, with congratulations and everything. And, you know, so that's really neat. You know, you, you know what's going on, you know, in that house. Um, my, you know, when my kid does, it's usually just, you know, w- walking away and going, okay, I'm hungry now. Can I have food? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's lots of ways to still celebrate those, those milestones and those moments. Um, and each kid is different. Um, when my son hit a million subscribers on YouTube, we got him, got him a cake. So it's not just competition. Right. It's the other milestones that they achieve along their way, along their journey. Um, and when we got him a cake, you know, uh, funny enough, he wanted to uh, smash his face into the cake and <laughs> all over Twitter and social media. So that's 
that's what you want to do go for it yeah absolutely uh, intuitive um I, I suppose it's a cake that probably few of his peers get so i mean uh, an incredible achievement yep. um so cope uh, like you guys uh, have a, a wonderful community online and you certainly see that on, on social media and um, in the events that you guys uh, do. But what is the work of COPE? Like, how do you guys provide support uh, and what does that look like and, and, and how has that been going? Well, when we first formed, we really didn't know what it was going to be. You know, we jumped in here knowing we wanted to change. We wanted to be a resource. Um, but we wanted people to, we wanted the media to be writing different stories about what esports could be for kids. And the first thing we did is we were thinking about, okay, well, how can we help? How can we get more kids involved here? And we started reaching out and meeting people. And I think what was most shocking to us is how many great organizations were already doing work here. There were so many organizations focused on education and either incorporating gaming into the classroom or setting up esports, you know, programs in schools. Um, there were also so many great resources for wellness. You know, that comes up a lot with parents. You know, concern about the health aspects of this. You know, are they staying, you know, fit? Are they getting enough exercise? You know, how should you be preparing them? You know, as far as you know, food and water before a competition. And there, all these resources already existed. So what COPE has decided our best way to support people is, is to be that hub, to be a place where, you know, gamers or their parents can go to find out about these great resources. You know, one of the biggest questions I get from gamers and parents is how do I find a good coach? And that has been challenging in this space because it's not as intuitive as just going to your local rec center and finding a coach. And so that's something, you know, that we want to be for people is to help them find those resources. Um, and on top of that, you know, so right now we create education for parents and for gamers. And we are that, you know, online support of asking us any question, whether it's how do I talk to my mom about gaming um, or advice on, you know, getting, you know, my machine fixed up. But also we're, um, we're raising funds um, and we hope to, we're creating the COPE Community Fund. And this is a way for us to give back to the community and to give back in the form of scholarships for education, um, for travel to events or for their setups. Brilliant, so uh, just a, a quick plug to our millions of viewers donate, I suppose we should mention. Um, Chris, uh, anything else to add about the, the support work there? No, I mean, she, she, she summed it up really well. Um, yeah, it, our job is to just make this easier for people mm -hmm. uh, and just give them that opportunity to be able to enjoy the experiences here to, to, and to, to rewrite the narrative that's already out there. Um, because talking to parents and helping to educate them and opening their eyes to, to the different career paths that are out there has been one of the most rewarding things for, for myself and for us. Um, because there, there are so many opportunities and so many areas in this space and they go from, you know, behind the scenes, working in an organization, doing anything to, to coaching, um, so many different collegiate opportunities to go into for coaching as well. Um, so yeah, that, that's been one of the most rewarding is, is helping opening eyes to parents and having the kids realize that their parents really do care and their parents do support them. Yeah, uh, it's great to hear that message. And also, the, it's evident to me that you re, you really have a personal touch. I mean, for everything that exists online, it's it's not always the case that you you feel that there's really people behind the the, the social media, for example. But with with Cope, I really think that there is a personal touch, and you you hinted at it before. But people come to you quite regularly asking for for help and guidance, and you you engage with them, um, including players. Like they come to you fairly often, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. And that can be, you know, a player who's just starting out and he's got, you know, five followers or that can be our top pros that are winning the events. You know, they, they all reach out to us for help in different ways. And what's the, what's the, 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 the message? Is it, is it often, um, it, would your message be sort of like, yes, like we're here for, here for you, but let's also get your parents involved. Is that, is that a way to sort of start that conversation? 100%. I mean, that that's it, you know, talking about, you know, parents and what is their role here. I think that's part of the challenge here for most parents is they don't understand what their role is in esports, and they don't think they have one. 
And so that's getting the gamers to understand that a lot of these issues and concerns they're feeling could be solved if they just got their parent involved. And they usually assume that their parent has no interest. And what we ask them is, have you really explained it? Have you really shown them what you're doing? You know, your dad didn't grow up playing this sport like he grew up playing football. You know, and talking about it before, you know, I think that, you know, parents tend to introduce their kids to the sports they did because they want them to be like them. And they also want them doing something they understand. So when they choose something that's completely out there, it's unnerving for the parent. This is a sec- gaming was the second time I experienced that. Um, my daughter chose figure skating as a very young age. I knew nothing about figure skating. And that was jumping into such a foreign world. But the key was finding good coaches. And so I think I kind of started with that experience before of everything changed for us. We started learning when we found good coaches and we found good organizations. And that's how I see esports. I think when parents realize that there are support structures here and that they can actually plan out a schedule for practice with a coach, just like any other sport, it suddenly becomes real. And then the other thing that parents don't understand is how to cheer. They don't know that they can go on to Twitch and form an account and watch a competition. They don't actually realize that it can be just as enjoyable as watching a football match. Yeah, and that, that's one of our biggest inhibitors and one of parents' biggest inhibitors is their lack of understanding, their lack of awareness, and their just overall fear of the unknown. Um, mm-hmm. So as, as kids come, come to us, we encourage them to communicate. Open those lines of communication with your parents. Let them know what's going on. Let them know what you love about gaming. Let them know what you're learning about gaming. Let them know how to watch you. Invite them to play with you. Um, or just encourage them to play other games so they can get a feel of the enjoyment that, that you're feeling as well. So yeah, um, getting rid of the stigma and overcoming that fear of the unknown. Those are some of our biggest biggest hurdles, biggest obstacles. Right, yeah, absolutely. I, I can totally imagine. Um, Lyria, let's um, bring you back in. <laughs> um, from the sort of the support strategies that we've mentioned so far, um, are, are they things that are, are also, you know, typical strategies that we encounter in, in traditional sports? And are there other strategies that are perhaps also useful in this space to support parents and, and, and who can do that too? Yes, I think so. Um, traditionally mentioned, parents have different roles in sports. So what Shay and Chris mentioned, we have the role of providers, emotional support, for example, logistics, finances, for example, um, travel. We have them as role models. So also in terms of your own sport participation or in terms of emotion regulation, And we have them as interpreters. So what does it mean, for example, to be successful in sport? And that's where parents come in similar in esports, I believe. But that's also where parents in esports might need a little bit of more information on it compared to traditional sports. And I think coaches can be very useful for that. So um, I when I work with coaches, I'm telling them that it is also somewhat your responsibility to let parents know what are their responsibilities? What are their roles? What do you expect from them maybe? What would you like them to um, to do, for example? How can you support them? Um, I think that's a very important point there. Of course, I mean, if it's a difficulty to find a coach in the first place, then uh, it might not be, uh, you might not be able to get that information from the coach, but maybe the associations come in here too. So in terms of really a structured parent education, there are a lot of topics you can touch upon on, whether it's parents' roles, whether it's their responsibilities, whether it's how they handle their, um, their own stress, maybe how they can do Um, parentings, for example, what Chris and Shay mentioned, how do you react as a parent after a game, especially after the maybe non-successful games? So um, just telling parents, well, get in touch with your child, sit down, ask how he or she wants you to behave as a parent, how he or she wants you to support um, the game maybe and the experience, and then uh, find a solution together and reflect on where this journey is going to go for both of you. Wise words. I, I love that we're sort of approaching uh, other like third parties in this. So we've we've got, uh, you know, a strong connection, parent and, and player, but that there are, there are also other actors in this space that, that have responsibilities here. Um, the coach being one of them. And uh, Blair, you mentioned that the, the coach can can offer support and, and provide um, 
yeah meaningful guidance for the the, the parent to, to play an active role in in this um I, I just wonder what that might sort of look like would if the parent isn't present and and the, and the player turns up let's say in an online uh setting esports setting and the player turns up they they look they join discord and the, they're in a sort of team training environment would the would you suggest that the coach has a has a role there to ask the player whether they can connect with the parent and, and invite them in or is this like a a parent's evening type uh, arrangement to facilitate you know uh, uh, the parenting team getting them together what what would be sort of good practice in this area yes i think these are already great ideas i mean it depends on the age of the child or the adolescent i think but especially if we have kids at young ages i believe the parents are crucial to be involved in their esports experience as well and even if they are first spread around the country or even internationally, there are so many virtual or digital ways in uh, disseminating these information. As you said, have a parent meeting online, maybe talk about your philosophy as a coach, your approach. What do you plan uh, with the child? Uh, what's your schedule, maybe? And what do you expect from the parents? All the things that I just touched upon. And um, there can be email newsletters, maybe there can be support groups for other parents of maybe the same team um, or similar uh, structures in there, because we know what we heard also from Shay and Chris, parents helping each other is also a great way actually to cope with emotional experiences or stress, uh, even in sports. So I think it would be great for coaches if they could at least offer the opportunity to parents to participate in the sport, yes. And I suppose in addition to that, it, it might take some support for the coaches to, to understand how to, to take that step because that at, at the moment might be quite an, a, a, a new thing for them to do as well by virtue of the, the age of you know, the, the competitive gaming world where we are. Um, Chris and Shay, have you ever had any you know, positive interactions with, with, with coaches or team managers or staff that have, have got you involved in the process? And what's that like? Yeah, um, <clears throat> with, I, I was very fortunate, again, with Misfits Gaming. Um, since day one, their coach, their manager has, and, and it's been a two-way street with myself and the manager. We have open communication. He'll ask me questions about how to approach Griffin or what Griffin might be comfortable with will you know include griffin on every every conversation every talk i'll talk with the manager um we have like i said that open communication um and he, he griffin looks up to him my son looks up to him as um just as much of a mentor as as much as a coach um so he goes to him with advice on health and fitness and training because they're both into um going to the gym and working out and staying fit and, and eating right. So he goes to him with questions for that. He goes to him for questions on streaming, competitions, you know, you name it, he's always there for him. Um, and again, we, we, we constantly talk several times a week. We're always, we're, we're texting, we jump on a call together and just kind of bouncing back and forth some ideas on what's going on with my son and, and what we can both do together to make things better for him and to help him along, along the way. Yeah. And one of the things that I'll add there about coaching is I think one of the things that's unique about esports still here, and, it, and it's, you know, since this is still a very young thing, is that coaches aren't really respected here in the same way they are in other sports yet. So, in, you know, in other sports, you know, a coach is absolutely essential on the sidelines to a game. You wouldn't consider, you know, any, you know, football game without the coaches on the sidelines. But in esports, even among the players, it's not really understood that a coach is needed. And so I think that's something that, you know, that the industry still has some growing to do to realize that a coach actually is a benefit. You know, so that some people think that having a coach online with you, you know, while you're playing a tournament is a form of cheating. Um, and I don't see it that way at all. You know, that's just good coaching. That's keeping them mentally in the game. You know, that's talking about strategies. You know, so those are things that I think that, you know, players have to overcome here as well as parents. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, um, I mentioned um, perhaps before this meeting, I mentioned that I come across this term, the, the parent positive environment um, and how sort of the organizations and coaches might have a role in, in making the the team area, the team space, 
uh, a welcoming one for parents to be involved with but actually by virtue of where we are in sort of like the the, the timeline of esports it might be that um that even has to come from the parents as a, as a as a as a first step as a suggestion because it might not be as i said it might not be uh, familiar territory for the young generation of coaches it, it very much is and that was actually the experience i had with my son because when he was first starting I started seeing all these really great strategy coaches online. I saw that there were AIM trainers and I asked him, I said, Hey, do you want this? This would make a great Christmas present. How about if I get you, you know, 10 sessions with this really great coach, you know, he's, he's coached some of the best. And he's like, Oh, I don't need that. You know, I know how to play this game. I don't need that. Well, I ended up buying it for him for Christmas. Anyway, he ignored it. Finally got him on the line with the guy once. And he was absolutely blown away. He was like, Oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe what he showed me. And then we had the same experience with AIM trainers is he thought, you know, my AIM's great. What do I, what's that going to help me? You know, so I think it's even for the gamers, it's realizing that this really is a sport like any other and coaching helps. Mm-hmm. Good to hear. I, I, it's nice to, nice to hear that, I suppose. And uh, certainly it's something that we see um, enormous, enormous potential in, in the role of the coach uh, in esports and I think it's only going to improve as things go forward and um, certainly in our experience talking to, to coaches they are they are looking for you know ways to develop formal and informal educational and, and training pathways and I think um, our organizations have communicated that, that we want to work together to sort of help provide that and, and provide coaches with um, the parents perspective and and get parents and coaches more used to working together and creating this positive parent environment um and also working with support staff so valeria you're a sports psychologist and we we need to find a way of of getting all of us on the same page uh working for the best interest of 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 the player um i'm sort of at the end of the the prepared questions i think we've, we've covered quite a lot of ground um is there anything that we're we're missing that we need to add or or are there is it is now the time to sort of look forward and see what's coming up and, and where we need to be working more in and what's in line for your your work uh, plans? We well, have maybe some... I can jump in on that one. Yeah, go for <laughs> I it. think it's a great initiative, uh, Matt, that you just mentioned that um, you should increase maybe the structures and also the education and professionalization of coaches in esports, because I'm sometimes still surprised how little education and coaching there is actually for coaches um, on how to maybe deal with parents, how to communicate with parents, how to reach out and collaborate with parents, even in the traditional licensed sports yet. So I'm thinking that's a great initiative. And so for the future, I not only see the topic of parent education, but I do see also the topic of coach education, which might involve both sides there. So I think it's very important for both of them to work together in order to achieve the best way for their child, actually. Absolutely. Um, We have a couple of questions. Are you guys up for some, some questions? Definitely. So bear with me. I, I have to uh, show off how slow I read now. Um, so we have uh, someone completing a master's degree in sports psychology with a heavy emphasis on esports. Um, when studying this area for a research proposal, it seemed that parents are reluctant to provide social support to their aspiring child due to a lack of understanding and financial prospects. However, once a child achieved professional status, emotional and tangible support became present. From your experiences, is this a scenario that occurs frequently? Yes, that's a scenario that occurs very frequently. I think, you know, most parents are just really not supportive and not paying attention until suddenly their child burst in and says, I just won $30,000. And then suddenly it's like, wait, you did what? And, you know, a lot of parents have had that experience here, but we also find some parents who still are not supportive you know, even after their child has won great amounts of money, because they still see this as, you know, as gambling or not really real or not leading any place, you know, so there's a lot of education yet to be done. But that is one of the things that frustrates me as well, that it takes your kid winning a huge sum of money to realize that what they're doing is valuable. Because, you know, what Chris was talking about earlier, just like any other sport, they are learning so much more here. It's not really about winning money. 
It's about them being, it's about them building confidence. It's about them building skills. It's about them finding stuff that they love to do, you know, and, and finding their future. And so I, that's what I'm frustrated with. I wish more parents would see that it's about more than just winning money. Yeah. It, it is frustrating that, that it takes winning a large sum of money for parents to realize that, you know, there's a financial success here when we don't look at success as just a financial aspect of it. There's so much more to it. Like Shay said, so much, so much that our kids are learning that these real world activities that they're learning, that they're just absorbing and taking in and working on and building on their own um, that we wish parents would get more involved right from the start. And I suppose some of that responsibility lands on the shoulders of um, Valeria and myself coming at things from the sort of academic perspective. I feel like research plays a role here where we have to fill in some of the blanks because if it remains like not very well understood, I think it will take uh, academic efforts to, to make it a little bit more transparent about what's going on and what are the pros and cons. Um, I think very early on in, in my sort of esports e journey, um, I came across a paper saying how it's like just just gaming itself it has a, an enormous amount of, of potential benefits for you know well being, and there are um, aspects of gaming that you know uh, satisfy a lot of our basic psychological needs, and uh, it, it can be healthy in moderation, and when it's well structured, it can be certainly a healthy thing, and. Um, yeah, I see some of the responsibility as, as being on, on the, the shoulders of academics to sort of help help this campaign a little bit. Um, so on, on that note, Valeria, can you, uh, can you see a, a couple of research studies emerging that you, you'd run in esports? Well, hopefully. So in terms of our niche on parents in esports, there is nothing out there yet. So I guess there is a whole new field to explore for us. Excellent. Well, it sounds like you might have a, a, a collaborator in the, in the chat. But um, I think we could uh, conclude there. Um, we, we didn't really touch so much on, on safeguarding. And of course, that is a, a, something to consider here, of course, because we're, we're working a, a lot online and there are messages being exchanged um, in private messaging. And there are you know, um, certainly things to learn and, and, and promote in that space. Um, I should mention that um, IFEC currently has a guidance document out um, for consultation that we're uh, looking to conclude in the next few weeks, which hopefully, hopefully we'll sort of keep that conversation uh, going and, and prominent and, and make sure that we're all um, working to sort of ethical and professional standards that we need to be at. Um, but I suppose that's it for the, the conversation today. I, I think it's, we've covered a lot. I think there's been a, a deep dive into some really fascinating areas there. Um, so it just remains to say thank you for, for joining us today. Thank you um, for Shay, Chris and Valeria for your time um, and everyone you know, watching on stream. This has been my first experience hosting a, a Twitch event. It's been uh, terrifying and thrilling all at the same time. And perhaps we can do this again in the, in the, in the future. Um, what say you guys? <laughs> that sounds fantastic and especially more research. That's what we need. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Um, I, we have a technical assistant in the background. Perhaps you can conclude this uh, adventure and um, yeah, speak to everyone soon. Thank you. Take Thanks, care. Thank Bye you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.